we'll be utilizing uh, uh, the acronym PRAYER, and we're going to be focusing on it will be the P is for praise, the second one is for R for repent, uh, A is for the ask, and Y is for the yield. Um, we may, because of one of our uh, participants is going to be a little late, we may change it around a little bit here. Uh, we have changed around a little bit, Rena, because I already changed it on the uh, on, on the thing. So we're going to start off with praise, but I'm going to open up with a word of prayer right quick before we go into our praise section. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. We thank you for an opportunity to come together. Although we're not uh, in the presence of one another, we are here on virtually long, uh, uh, Father, uh, agreeing that uh, you are the Lord of our uh, Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, that you are the head of our lives. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to come together, to pray to you, to intercede for others, Father God. And uh, we just can't thank you enough. So, love. so as we go through this prayer rally this evening, Father God, be with us. Um, Father God, hear our prayer this evening, Father God. We want to be uh, dutiful servants unto you and do as uh, you would guide and direct us. So we thank you for this time. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, our first section is going to be praise. We'll be led by uh, Deacon, Joe, Deacon Adrian Jones. Uh, Pastor, did you, you get the presentation? I have not yet. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I may need to, something's going on with my computer. I know I've been having problems. Oh, I just got it. All right. One thing I will tell you, it's very easy. Uh, uh, after the leader goes through their uh, their prayer, their scripture, uh, we'll, we'll open it up for somebody else who wants to do a short prayer in that particular section. All you have to do is hit your uh, space bar and that will open you up, your, will unmute, and uh, you'll be able to do a prayer yourself, okay? Here we go. All right. A praise section. And the first one, there you go, Deacon Jones. Uh, yes, sir. So um, I I do things a little unconventional. I realize that uh, when uh, Elder Bullock reached out to me and uh, offered me the opportunity to uh, be on on the uh, prayer rally tonight uh, and to come forward and praise, I uh, I wanted to do Psalms one twenty one, and um, my reason for doing that is because one of my goals is to have my church family get to know me better which may or may not be a good thing. We'll have to talk about that later. And for me to get to know my church family better. So I wanted to share a little something with you all. Then I'll uh, read the scripture and then I'll uh, say a prayer or pray this scripture to you all uh, as praise to God. So uh, as a young adult and father, uh, I was always amazed at the things that a man tries to do to steady his family. At times it felt like it was a bit much and Sometimes it even felt a bit overwhelming. So one of my favorite times was when my father would come visit and I could take that time with him as an opportunity to be son again. Um, I could let him take charge and oversee the things I had done or even written down as a list of things that I had set aside for him to do when he visited because I knew my dad possessed a lot of wisdom and skills to make my complicated things easy and some of my impossible things possible. Well, when my father passed, I literally felt like those opportunities would be gone forever as I did not know where to look or know how to replace them. But over time, as my prayer life grew and I began to humbly seek the Lord, I saw myself bringing my difficulties and my challenges to him in prayer and I could literally feel comfort and relief in knowing that I could share my burdens with God and he would always provide a way for me. Um, he would be my ever present help in my time of need. And I can recall how Psalms 121 became a psalm of praise for me because it so adequately captured a feeling, a need, a connection I have with God, I personally have with God where I feel like I can come to him as an awkward, insecure, 
unknowing child and receive his love and guidance to strengthen me and get me through whatever I was going through. So I, I want to share Psalm 121 with you all, and then I'm going to pray this psalm as praise to God. Uh, so Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. I, hold on a second, Elder Book, let me see if I can get your version in view. Because uh, Bobby taught me to always do the ESV. I want to make sure this is ESV, so I don't get so I don't get translation shamed. Uh, so Psalms 121, one through eight. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He will. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not spite, smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Mm. So I would like to pray this psalm to God in praise. Um, and I would like for you all to join me if you will bow with me. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you in praise. Lord, we praise you for being a great God, for being an awesome God, for being a God that we are able to look to and feel strength and encouragement from connecting with your presence, Lord. Father, we praise you for the very help you send our way as we seek you. Father, we praise you because you are the maker of heaven and earth and all that is in the earth. Lord, we praise you for keeping us and stabilizing us and for the comfort you bring to us. Lord, we praise you for being a present God, an almighty God. Lord, we praise you that when we are tired, when we are weary, when we are downtrodden, Lord, that you are not resting. Lord, we praise you for being a God who does not sleep or take breaks so that you are always available when we need you. Lord, we praise you because you know your children require of you all day. Heavenly Father, we praise you for keeping us, Lord. We are grateful for your protections, Heavenly Father, and your might. Heavenly Father, we praise you because you guide us during the day, Lord. We praise you because you watch over us at night. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, as you are and always, Lord, always on alert, alert, saving us from situations we don't even know exist. Heavenly Father, we praise you for being an always God. We praise you for being an everywhere God. Heavenly Father, we praise you for being an all-knowing God. And Heavenly Father, we praise you because you thought enough of us to send your son to be a sacrifice for our sins so that we may forever be in relationship with you. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can come to you as that broken and limited child and turn our burdens over to you and you will be our strength, our father and our source to see us through. Heavenly Father, we can only praise you because it is only you who can truly help us. And Heavenly Father, we ask for your help and your presence in our lives now, henceforth, and forevermore. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, God, for being our ever-present help. Father, we submit this prayer and this praise to you in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and Lord, we say amen, 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 and amen. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Thank you for the praise. We, uh, we want to continue to lift him up. If uh, someone has um, to, to praise God right now, go right ahead. This opportunity to give a prayer to him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Father God. We give you all praise and all honor. We know, again, you are the head of our lives. And again, Father God, not for not anything that you have done for us, anything you will do for us, or anything uh, that we want, we praise you just for who you are, because you are a great God, a living God, and one that we love, we praise, and we give all honor to. So we thank you for this time, Lord. We lift you up. We thank you and we praise you. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Our next section, we're going to be going right into ask. Like we're going to, like I said, it's a little bit out of order tonight. We're going to be asking God for uh, just for his, his divine mercy on each and every one of us. Uh, it's going to be led by Brother Kevin tonight. And his scriptures will be coming up. Ooh, that should have been hidden, but you can keep going. <laughs> All right. Well, I was that was for Elder Bullock to put me in. So I got a variety of scriptures and going through about asking. And I know it's just asking. I still look at I'm a big person of uh, the five P's, the plan, ploy, position, and the pattern. And I think asking goes uh, hand in hand in that forever. So as I go through this, I'll share this with you. In asking in, in prayer, we must first have a relationship with Jesus and have faith because we can't ask for anything unless we have faith. And Jesus must be familiar with us and we must be very intimate with him. We must know his voice. We must know his voice as he would know our voice. And we know that faith is the key to the kingdom and faith is, is uh, also opens the door. But without having the key to the kingdom, we have no access. But when God allowed Jesus Christ to go to the cross, that gave us all the access we needed and having the opportunity and acknowledge that he has uh, chosen us. And when we ask him, we must have a hunger in seeking God and asking for prayer. And hunger with God should be an intimate one. And our hunger should not be that of an appetizer. It should be of a full entree when we go to God and asking him. And that's going through the relationship we have with God. When asking in prayer, what is our desire level? This is understanding and looking at each one of us. What is our level? Is it small, medium, or is it a lot that we have? Then we also will go to an asking. What is our position when we're asking him? Are we asking in a comfort level, an unsettled level, or are we asking from a, a area of desperation at that point? What is our ploy? Is this for us personally, or is it for the building of God's kingdom? Or is it pretty much what we're looking at? What is our prayer pattern that we have? Is this sporadic pr prayer, or is it habitual prayer, or is it seasonal prayer? So we have to be, when we start to ask, we have to make sure that all of these things are aligned in asking. And also we must have the perspective when we go into asking in prayer also, are we committed or are we on the fence? Are we swam back and forth or are we uncommitted? And how do we ask in prayer? Are we asking from a religious standpoint or we just have a set prayer that we ask or is it coming from a habitual standpoint or is it coming from a relational standpoint that we have that relationship and we're very intimate with God and when we ask him. When asking in prayer, we must be open and honest. We can't refer to God in the abstract, you know, pretty much like, uh, you know, having some of the highfalutin words and Lord thy art, just be real when you start going asking God for what you need. I know pastors have shared that with us a lot. And we can't ask uh, with prayer and have a prescriptive prayer every day. Because, I mean, you think about it. If someone says something to you every day over and over, you become monotonous. We know God is not looking at us monotonously, but is that an authentic prayer? Are we asking in that format? So we have to question ourselves with that. And when we ask in prayer, we must be specific and not general. I mean, we can't have a general prayer, but, however, when you go to asking, you need to be specific. Although we know that God knows what we need and what we want, he wants us to acknowledge that with him. Because, I mean, it's like uh, one of the things, it's not like we're a uh, transaction, we're giving something to get something back, but he wants to know that we're asking, and, if, and just like he chose us to be his children, so you got to be asking in that standpoint. And when we ask him, we must be intentional in doing so in prayer. So my first scripture looking at we Matthew 21 and 22. 
if you believe you will receive whatever you ask in prayer this doesn't mean that god will this doesn't mean that you get trumped the will of god in our prayers when we consider this verse consider this verse in the bible about god answering prayer and we find that our prayers will be answered in accordance with god's will the more our heart grows to god the more we will want God more. We will want what God wants. So that's in the formation of asking and having more of a relationship with God and understanding that we're not asking per se for what we need, but whatever we need, it should be aligned to what his, to uplift and build his kingdom as well. Matthew seven and seven is a uh, ask and it would be given to you. Seek and you will find and it will it will be open for you in this verse. It was more so when uh, Jesus Christ was encouraging the disciples to keep the faith because Jesus identified with they had lost their faith. And that's one of the things that us as Christians, we do suffer from that sometimes. We kind of lose faith because we go, we're so focused on what our eyes see and we're more carnal than spiritual. So we do lose faith. So in Matthew 7 and 7, and it was just enhancing that, you know, it will be given unto you if you seek and you will find it. And also in this passage, and God was asked, well, the passage is the focus of the father and not being more, more the thing in the peripherals, like the God, the father would be more of the focus in our asking and not everything on the peripheral side. As with problems and circumstances that comes into our life so that we can get closer to God so we want to, when we ask him, we ask him for our relationship to be locked into faith and not having that circumstantial faith, having the faith of uh, duration, endurance, and knowing that uh, God will do whatever we ask as long as it's according to building of his kingdom. Instead of seeking how to correct or fix the problem, we should be asking God to be nearer for our guidance, our discernment, and a, and a deeper relationship with him. Also in this verse, Jesus was explaining to his disciples that the closure of the gap uh, to God was Jesus himself. So that way we don't have to have anyone per se interceding for us, that we able to pray to God directly. And this is also related to glorifying Jesus also. And Jesus further emulate, uh, it, it, it further illuminates that the disciples to disciple and us that God is our source and the things that we are asking for are resources. So we latch in, lock on to God and asking in prayer and also with the uplifting of his kingdom. In John 14 and 13, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the father may be glorified in the son. And that is also asking for the uplifting of the kingdom but we're glorifying Jesus Christ in our asking and what we're asking for. John 14 and four, you uh, 14 and 14, you may ask, you may ask me for anything in my name and I would do it. This means that the, this doesn't mean that to take Jesus on the end of our prayer, it means that we are to align our will with God's will when we're asking God's will and God gives us what we ask for and there again it goes to the portion that we have in faith and this is all for also for the uplifting of his kingdom john 16 and 24 until now you have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive you receive that your joy may be full first john 5 and 4 and this is the confidence that we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. James 4 and 3, you ask, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passion. So in all that I have shared concerning asking, in the asking, we know we're asking to, uh, for the uplifting of God's kingdom. We're asking in faith. We're asking in confidence. We're asking and we're knowing our, our desire level. We're asking in a process of what our position is going to be. We asking in a conjunction with what our ploy. We asking in what our prayer pattern is, and we asking in the perspective of our prayer. And we also be asking, and how do we ask? From what standpoint is going to be religiously, habitually, or relationally? Relationship. 
But going with that, so we're going to go in prayer and uh, seeking God and asking and giving us the discernment and the clarity of knowing how to ask in prayer. So if you go with me in prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing us to come together in uh, the prayer. We learn it more about how to praise you. And Father, we learn how to ask of you. Father God, in our asking, please give us the wisdom and the discernment to know the asking for the uplifting of your kingdom. Father God, we want to thank you for all that you have given us and given us the, the mindset of the asking and we asking from a relationship standpoint. Father God, that we're not asking from the standpoint to benefit us, but Father God, asking for the benefit of your kingdom. Father God, we thank you for allowing your sources We'll allow you to be our source for asking and you give us the resources that we need. Father God, please give us the, the right mindset when we come to you be, before your throne and to ask. Father God, do not allow us to ask from a selfish motive. Allow us asking for the motive that we will uh, benefit your kingdom and we uplift it and we grow. Father God, we can grow into the component of people that we may pass, people we may go, but Father God, and one thing in asking, we're asking that you would send some individuals our way that we can show how you have uh, given us the resources and we can illuminate you and imitate you and going forth and praising and asking and lifting up your name. Father God, as we move forth and continue on in this prayer rally, Father God, please allow us to praise you. Allow us to give the right mindset of asking. And Father God, we just thank you for sending Jesus Christ to the cross to the sin, to defeat sin and death and come up on the third day with all power. Submit this prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We do thank you, brother. We, 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 we do want to. God is there. He is uh, ahead of our lives. And again, uh, he wants us to be open with him with that from a relational perspective to ask those things that are are needed in our lives. So if someone else has uh, a yearning again to ask from from God, use this time right now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we do come to you again, just giving you praise and honor for who you are, oh God. God, we ask right now that you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us, oh God. God, we ask that you help us align to your will. As the Lord's prayer tells us, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So God, we ask that as we sit here and we meditate on the prayers that even this week or over this month that we have asked, Allow us to sit with those right now in these moments as we are asking according to your will. But help us to reflect on those prayers. Did we ask out of our own passion? Did we ask out of our own selfish desire? Did we ask according to your will? And God, if we have not asked in that way, help us, guide us, direct us into how to ask appropriately, into how to ask such that we leave the will unto you, O oh God. God, we ask that you continue to grow Mount Zion up in ways that we will continue to pray. We will continue to seek you and we will continue to ask for your guidance and your will to be done. In our personal lives, but also in the church body. God, we ask that you continue to be with us through these prayers tonight. Allow your spirit to rise up in ways that it has not risen, oh God over time as we continue to connect together in these prayer rallies, as we continue to connect in unity in these prayer rallies. God, allow our asking to become so unified that the spirit, as the spirit connects us together, as, the, as you guide us in the spirit, oh God. God, we ask that you be with us as we go through our days, as we go through the continued challenges of this world, oh God as we continue to go through and endure COVID-19, oh God. We ask that you be with us. We ask that you protect us. We ask that you guide us. We ask that you lead us according to your will and according to your way. And God, we also ask that if it, at this time you're not ready to remove COVID-19 or remove challenging situations that many of us may be dealing with, oh God, we ask that you give us endurance 
and allow us to persevere only with the strength of you and with the strength of your spirit. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear sister. Appreciate it. Thank you, God. We do ask, for, for Father God, we do know that you, again, that all of our asks, all of our things that uh, we need come from you. You know what we need, Father God. So we just continue to thank you for being, have the, having the ability to have a father who is open to us to ask. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in the supreme Jesus' name. Amen. Our next section is yielding to God. Yielding to his will in our lives. Uh, we're going to be by first uh, Sister Doreen and follow up right behind her will be Sister Sandra. Okay. Go to the first scripture. I too share. Uh, some history with um, challenging situations and often we speak about God being in control and he knows what's going on and we speak these words but I often wonder if like me does the comfort and peace go all the way to your inner person your inner being your soul and um very in very recent times um again i have been met with challenges and i feel like yes i've fallen short that uh that peace does not reign within me and so the yield reminds me that i do believe we do believe but thank you, God, that you can forgive us for our wavering, our unbelief, because we repent and we return to you, Father, knowing that you are our God, our Father, our place of peace. So uh, read with me, um, along with me, this scripture, Psalms 143, 8 through 12. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I run to you to hide me. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. For the glory of your name, O Lord, preserve my life. Because of your faithfulness, bring me out of this distress. In your unfailing love, silence all my enemies and destroy my foes, for I am your servant. Pray with me. Dear God, Heavenly Father, most gracious, and loving creator. In the morning, as we open our eyes to a brand new mercy, a brand new day, we do recognize, Father God, that it is because of your unfailing love. And because we open our eyes, we are once again reminded of your steadfast love, unconditional. And so we look to you as our only source, Father God. We ask you, Father, to show us where to walk as we again relinquish, yield, submit, and surrender to you because we're here by your mercy. We're left here by your grace to be an example, to be your ambassador, to show the world the love of a God that is so great that he came to care for a wretch like me, a sinner saved by grace. Rescue me, Father God, from the enemies of unbelief, of anxiety, of heaviness, of distress. 
I, Father God, forgive me for I've been distracted and have taken my eyes off of Jesus, my only source of peace. Rescue me as I hide for you, hide in you, and teach me again to do your will. Allow your Holy Spirit to lead me in the path of your righteousness for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, Father God, preserve my life. I don't believe, Father God, you have brought me so far that you are ready for me to go. And thank you, Father God. I am grateful for your faithfulness. You, because of your faithfulness, I believe you will bring me again out of this distress. In your unfailing love, silence the enemy of my mind that wanders from your wanders from your heart. Destroy all my foes, Father God, for I am your servant. Lord, and as I look around, and even though my situation may never change, our situation may never be resolved as we have we think, Father God. We don't know when it will be over with, Father. We don't know when the end of this distress, Father God. But we know that your grace is enough to change us in our situation, that we will continue to find our rest and our peace in you and your promises. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, sister. We appreciate that. God bless you. We do need to yield to him. And our second portion of our yielding will be led by Sister Sandra. Amen. Amen. God is so gracious. He's so kind to show us how to yield to him by his spirit so that we don't try to live this life without his guidance and his wisdom by his spirit and his word. And so I'm thankful. I uh, continue to go back to the book of James and James continues to remind me to seek him for his wisdom. Um, <clears throat> something that was so very apparent when I came to the scripture, um, when Elder asked me to participate was the caution we take when we travel in our cars and we yield. And we take that caution because we wanna be certain not to enter a dangerous situation. And I find when I ask God to help me to yield in all things, not just a major purchase, but in all things, he prevents me from walking into a dangerous decision or an area that he hasn't called me to because when we rely on him from the smallest direction to the greatest we will find peace we will find divine intervention we'll find the guidance we need because times are difficult times are difficult so pray with me Gracious God, thank you, Father, for being so kind to your children that you gently teach us and lead us and guide us to yield to your spirit. And even when we don't acknowledge your nudging and tugging so that we can yield according to the way that you would have us to go, your mercy and your grace that covers us. It allows us, oh God, to turn back to you. So thank you, Father, for endowing us with the gift of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from every time we call out to you. The wisdom to know what, when, and how we should live this life that you have called us to and the wisdom that teaches us how to 
show others what it is to walk in the faith as a child of God. Father God, when I call on you and I ask you to show me how to yield to your way and not my own, I'm always reminded to let love lead because out of that love, the abundance of other things that follow covers a multitude of my very own sin. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for being merciful and kind. Thank you for your heavenly wisdom that produces peace and understanding. And thank you that we will never have enough until the end of time we will continue to learn more and more of you and how we should live this world on this world. And give your name all honor and glory and praise for being with us till the end of time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, sister. We do appreciate that. We do need to yield to God and to his his will in our lives. If the someone is wearing, someone wants to reach out to him right now in prayer, the opportunity to pray to him is available. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord. Please, Lord, we pray that each and every one of us and all in Mount Zion, all on this call, will yield to your will, Father God, that we have a discerning heart, that we truly do intentionally pay attention to the calls of the Holy Spirit in our lives, to follow your lead, to do what you would have us to do. Let us be instruments of you. Let us be vessels to do your will at all times. Teach us to yield. Give us the desire to yield to your will. We thank you and we praise you. And it's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our last section this evening, uh, we're going to be focusing on repentance. We do sin in each and we are flawed people. We we do, uh, not always, we knowingly, unknowingly, following what God would have us to do. So, Right now, we're going to have uh, this particular section by uh, our brother Patrick. Amen. Amen. Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for uh, being late. I am the ultimate uh, Uber driver for the family. Uh, Erica has not been cleared to drive because of her seizure, so I have to go take her to work and pick her up. So sometimes, some days, she, she has to work long, but... Uh, the fact that we are family, uh, I, I'm trusting, I believe, and I know that you guys have to forgive me. So with that said, <laughs> with that said uh, uh, repentance. Uh, but first of all, before we before we get into this, I would like to say that the reason I uh, selected repentance when uh, Elder Buller asked me is because the line of fear that I'm in, uh, I deal with so many different people and so many different walks of life. And uh, anytime we start talking about church or Christians in the shop, it's always... Uh, Christians are hypocrites. Christians are, you know, churches are just businesses now. And, you know, uh, um, churches don't have the impact that they used to have, you know. So it, it, it questions my spirit, you know, to make sure that, hey, are we really living uh, uh, Christ like lives? You know, are, are we, are we, is there sin in our life that's keeping us from being able to, for our light to shine? You know, are we impacting or are we, are we pushing away? So, um, just, just for myself, uh, to me, sin and should, should be to every Christian. Uh, uh, sin is second nature to Christianity, just just like wheels to a car. I mean, you know, as long as we're in the sanctifying process, you will re be repentant until we're glorified. So, uh, like Scripture says, if you think you're without sin, you're highly mistaken. Uh, so, before before I get into the actual text, I would like to, if I, I'm not sure if it's going to come up, but show an intro to this particular song, if I can. Uh, let me see here. 
And I feel rushed because it's 756. Come on. Go to it. Can you guys see that? Brother, you're all right. Can you see it? Can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, I just want to give an intro to, to this particular psalm. Uh, this psalm, as the form, is a psalm of instruction, not prayer or praise. It is a psalm of reproof and ad admonition and singing, which we are to teach and admonish one another in the in the for, in the foregoing psalm. After a general demand of attention, God, by His prophets, deals with the children of this world to convince them of their sin and folly, and setting their hearts upon the wealth of this world. In this psalm. After a light pre preface, he deals with those that were in profession, the church's children, to convince them of their sin and folly in placing their religion in ritual services while they neglected practical godliness. As this is a sure a way to ruin as the other, this psalm is intended, one, as proof of the carnal, Jew, of the carnal Jews, both those that rested in the external performances of their religion and were remiss in their more excellent duties of prayer and praise, and those that expounded the law to others, but live wicked lives themselves. As a prediction of the <clears throat> abolition of the ceremonial law and of the introduction of a spiritual way of worship in by the kingdom of the Messiah. As a representation of the day of judgment in which God will call men to an account concerning their observance to those things which they have thus been taught. Men shall be judged according to what is written in the books, and therefore Christ is fitly represented, speaking as a judge, then when he speaks as a lawgiver. Here is I, the glorious appearance of the prince that gives law and judgment, instruction given to his worshipers to turn their sacrifices into prayers, a rebuke to those that pretend to worship God, but live in disobedience to his commands. Their doom, read, and warning given to all to look to their conversation as well as to their devotions. These instructions and admonitions, which must take ourselves, we, we must take to ourselves and give to one another in singing this song. I'm just trying to get back to the scriptures. And it reads, the mighty one, God the Lord has spoken and, and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shown forth. May our God come and not keep silent. Fire devours before him, and it is very temptuous around him. He summons the heavens above and the earth to judge his people. Gather, gather my godly ones to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. And I, I do not reprove you for your sacrifices and whom your burnt offerings are continually before. Other bullet, your scripture is not coming up all the way completely, buddy. I shall take no young bull out of your house, nor male goats out of your foes. For every beast of the forest is mine, a cow on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all it contains. Shall I, eat, shall I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of male goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you, and you will honor me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to tell of my statutes and to take my covenant in your mouth? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. 
When you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you associate with adulterers. You let your mouth loose in evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought I was just like you. I will reprove you and state the case in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forgot God, or I will tear you in pieces, and there will be none to deliver. He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of God. Now, I'm not saying this as as I'm saying this individually and, and, and collectively, but not saying that this this necessarily describes our you know Mount Zion, which I hope it doesn't, but just to just to, just to know, and I'm sure you guys have heard, uh, churches are have been uh I don't know. I I think we've come short in some areas, uh, and and that's across the board. You know, you know, as 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 Christian people, I don't believe that we're uh, standing on the word of God in faith. I think the world has so many temptations, uh, uh, visual uh, through our hearing. We 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 are enticed and tempted by so many things. And I speak personally. You know, as one who's tempted daily, I I, I repent daily. For things I, you know, thoughts or something I may listen to us or, or something I may see and, you know, just a, a, a evil thought come to my mind. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. And, and that is proof that we are a child of God, that you are convicted. If I believe that if we can be tempted or, or we can commit a sin and not be convicted, then I think we need to actually uh, check ourselves and, and see where we actually stand with God. Because when Holy Spirit is, is, is dwelling within you, you will be convicted through temptation or through sin that, that you may uh, commit. Um, and we know the sins of commission start in the heart, you know, so whatever man, you know, believes or is in his heart, it will come out. So um, I would just like to encourage everybody that, you know, during these trying times, we, we can't fellowship together. So it's easy to, you know, for your mind to wander away from everybody, you know, to be uh, uh, on the phone, on the internet and, and just, just dealing with life that you may be tempted to throw the towel in or or, or just, uh, you know, let your faith waver. But we know that the victory is already won. All we have to do is walk in it. For, for this is nothing new to God. As Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. You know, this is just something we've never experienced, but it's something small to God. So I would like to encourage everybody that, uh, you know, we, we, we will fall short. The scripture says a righteous man falls seven times, but we don't have to stay there. So as you carry that uh, through that temptation, just, just, just remember we have a way out, and that is the Holy Spirit, and, and it will speak in that temptation. All we have to do is respond. And I would like now to pray this, pray this psalm and let everybody get on their way. I felt rushed, but it's 804, so <laughs> I tried to get it in. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, the mighty one, the one of all, the only creator, the creator, the provider. The one who, who knows all and owns all. The one who has cows on, on thousand, thousand cows on, on the hill. We, we just thank you. We give you honor and praise. Uh, and if there is anything in our hearts and our minds that is not of you, God, reveal it to us that we may repent of it. If there's anything in our, in our as a collectively that is not of you, reveal it. And Lord, have mercy on us and just give us the, the, the sound mind and wisdom to change it, God. For Lord, you know our hearts. You are the you are the provider. You are the ultimate life giver. You are the life taker. How dare we uh, proclaim your statutes, God? We have wickedness in our hearts or evil on our minds. Forgive us. We repent uh, individually. We repent collectively, God. And I pray for anyone that's on the sound of my voice or any saint, any chosen one of yours that has struggled with any hidden sin, God. Right now, have mercy on them. Give them a way out. Place them in a body that will love them, Lord, and, 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 and will help them endure and, and, and restore them. Oh, God, we just thank you for who you are. For you're the one that speaks and the, and the earth responds. You're the one that speaks and the heavens respond, God. And we just thank you for that. There's no one like you, God. No one that can be testified uh, like you. We truly thank you. We give you all praise and all thanks, God. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name that we submit this prayer individually and collectively. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We do need to repent. We do need to look at our own actions. Again, that we do it day in, day out. I would just ask you to take a few moments right now to pray to God and ask for forgiveness. And those things that uh, you want to 
repent of if anyone wants to open up. This time is available to you. Amen. Father God, we come to you and want to come to you in our full heart of repentance. Father God, although we know we have a sin in our lives and sin that we know of and sin that we don't know of, but Father God, we want to come to you and repent on that. Father God, as we are challenged on the every hand, but Father God, allow us to be focused on you and not focused on the situation. Although we may have fiery darts coming towards us and at us, Father God, we know that you have us all protected. Father God, please let us all know whatever battles and challenges we go through, it is not our battle, it is yours. And the vengeance is yours. But Father God, allow us to latch on to your ever-loving mercy and your ever-loving grace. And Father God, as we sustain this time, allow us to get closer to you. Allow us to en enhance our relationship to you. Father God, allow us to be in our tent of meetings to give you the praises and the honor and the glory that you have so dearly have put upon us. Father God, we thank you for taking in a wretch like we are. Father God, we thank you for sending your son to the cross, to defeat sin and death. Father God, we thank you for being our ultimate warrior. We thank you for being our ultimate peacemaker. And Father God, all in all, we thank you for being the I am, the I am. Father God, we thank you and we love you. And we submit this prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we do thank you, Lord. We thank you. We have the ability to come to you and ask for forgiveness. We just love you and we praise you. And we give all honor to you. So I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless your family. I'm glad you all can come out tonight so we can lift God up by praising him, by repenting and asking for forgiveness, by asking those wants, those things we need in our lives to do his will, yielding to him in every effort that we have with him. We, uh, we just, again, we do this once a month as a collective body. We can't be together in presence of one another, but at least we can do this on a virtual basis. So we just thank you and we just continue to pray. As everyone knows our theme, we want to be a house of prayer this year. So let's continue to focus on that. Let's continue to, throughout the day, throughout the week, continue to pray to God, ask him. Let's not leave him out of anything that we do in our lives. So again, this is not a thing for just Sunday. It's not a thing for just the Tuesday, third Tuesday of the, of the month. It's Something we should be doing on a daily basis. Amen. Any specific prayer requests as we close off our closing prayer? Elder Bullock. Yes, sir. I would just like to remind everybody that uh, God has really showed us favor because no one of our immediate church family has, has uh, expired due to COVID. So that, that is a blessing. Yes, it is. That is, that, that is really a blessing. And and uh, Pastor Harris, Eric, and I were thinking about you today when we found out that UNC was sending everybody back home. We, you know, Isaiah came to mind. So, you know, just just know that he he's he is in our prayers and and uh, any other college students that I think everybody's coming home now though from all universities, though, right? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, we just got just got well, he got word that yeah, it looks like they are going to send um, send them back. Just strongly encouraging those who can go home. Uh, to to head home, and so since he's only thirty minutes away, right. uh, he thought right. we'll be heading back. So, but let's 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 be part of prayer. Let's pray for those um, students who are international, those students who are out of state, um, who can't easily, or, or financial impact that might have for parents trying to reach their children. So, my heart goes out to them um, when they're not as close. So, let's pray for them. Okay. Amen. Our uh, closing scripture is coming from Psalms 106, 44 through 48. God where it reads, nevertheless, he looked upon their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake, he remembered his covenant and relented according to the abundance of his steadfast love. He, ca he caused them to be pitted by all those who held 
them captive. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the nations that we may give thanks to the holy name, God, in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, we do thank you, Father God. We thank you for this opportunity to come together to pray to you, Father God. I lift you up. We thank you for all things that you do in our lives. We thank you for waking us up. We take nothing for granted, Father God, because you are truly the head of our lives. The air that we breathe, the ability to see, the ability to walk, the ability to touch, to taste, to do all things, Father God, is because of you, Father God. And we thank you for that right now, Lord. Continue to be with us, Lord. Touch us during this time of this pandemic, Father God. We reach out right now to all those students, Father God, who are uh, in a situation where they have returned to school, Father God, and because of the pandemic and this uh, virus continues to uh, spread, Father God, that things are closing down. We pray, Father God, that keep those students safe, whether it's in college, whether in high school, whether in any school situation, Father God. We pray for their safety. We pray for their health, Father God. Lift them up. If they can uh, use, utilize you, Father God, they can rely on you, Father God. We pray that they know you, Father God, and use the wisdom, Father God, that you have placed on each and every one of us, Father God. So touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. And wherever our walks are, Father God, in each and every day and work in association with others, as we go out just in general business, Father God, be with us. Let us use our minds and our hearts. And I had, Father God, to reflect you, Father God, that someone will see Christ through us. But let us have wisdom to be safe in everything that we do, Lord. So pray now in the mighty name of Jesus, to touch Mount Zion in the mighty name of Jesus, all who are on this call and all who are part of our family. Touch us in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you tonight. We praise you and we give it all to you. And as I pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. Sorry for the little the hip up kick up there at the beginning, but hey, God is still for real. <laughs> and he is good Absolutely. all the time. Good seeing your faces yeah. for those who want to put the picture 